Man, this is lifestyles of the poor and unfucking fortunate. But I tell you what, but 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 bitch, we got views. Hey, Jill, dude, I love that song. Have y'all heard that yet? Yeah, I think we yeah, rapped it. Yeah, love me in the county yeah. jail. Hey, that motherfucker's gonna be cool. Shut Shut damn. 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 Hell yeah. Right, we know a couple of Dells. <laughs> we know plenty of Dells. <laughs> Seriously, bro. And yeah. dirty dummies. Yeah. For a little bit, I grew up on Dale Ray. You know what I mean? <laughs> So what I'll do is I'll just bring it in, and then we'll um, we'll just shoot the shit, man. Okay, like let's it. talk about shit you want to talk about, bro. All right, cool. Am I still in frame? Yeah. yeah. Oh, are we, are we allowed, can we smoke on YouTube? Just as, bro, uh, you, back yeah. Are you smoking yeah. your day? Bro, I chat, bro. You can smoke. Well, I mean, I smoke. As long as I have a spoon, we're straight, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Look, did you see the video? Look. Oh, that's Look. Wayne. That's why he's been on Facebook, dude. They took me out. Look. We're riding the fucking Murfreesboro, right? Stuck in traffic, and a Vanderbilt cop's behind me. I was like, surely to God, he's not in jurisdiction. Well, I pull out a blunt, and Chad goes, Leroy, are you going to light that up with the cop right behind you? And I look at him dead, and I was like, fucking Christians. <laughs> and put it back. He said, fuck you. He said, fuck him. He's going to earn his 40 a year. Yeah, fuck God. We about to earn no, that 40, bro. He even got your ass, though. Oh, dude. Who the fuck? <laughs> Chat Arms TV, man. And we've got something special in the works. It's working right now. And you got Leroy Biggs and yeah. Old Church. He's special. I'm Ed. I'm special me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Man, what's going yeah, on, fellas? I stole from you. It is 1.27 in the morning. It is. I'm 31 years old, and I'm hanging out with Leroy, and we're doing what we want to do. And we've been doing it for the past week. <laughs> <I'm fucking laughs> Seriously, bro, we've been with each other every night for at least the past three or four days. Hell yeah, dude. Just shooting the shit, hanging out, huh? Reminiscing, driving down old roads of a girl. Driving home. down Cheatham fucking county, dude. Like oh. talking about like a bunch of, you know, just like memories and shit. Yeah. That we've had in the past with people. You know, kinda where people are today. You know, just it's kind of reminiscent. Yeah. So this this will be a good segue. So Leroy spoke about his song. Talk about how y'all met each other. How y'all know each other from back in the day. Bro, the first time I ever seen Leroy, Leroy well, he was he was he's always been friends with my brother Aaron. Yeah. He's always been uh, like real good friends with him. So he was significantly younger than me, but I knew him down the street because he was the kid that wanted to rap battle everybody. I remember remember that Harpeth game. Oh, dude. Dude, he, he was beside us con- concession stands rap battling people, bro. Didn't yeah. give a shit about the football game. Bro, yeah. we had a, uh, like, because high school football, especially in Cheatham County, dude, like half the fucking county's out there, right? Yeah. Well, Harpeth always had four or five fucking senior rappers that wanted to rap. And I was like, fuck it, I'll rap battle them, dude. We had more people on the track surrounding us. Then we're in the stands, bro. Cops thought people were fighting. Then they got there and just saw two country ass kids talking <laughs> shit in rhythm, like with no beat, dude. I made like two hundred dollars. Yeah, night. you told me you bought, like, you, you bought some weed with it, didn't you? Hell yeah, bro. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Oh uh, yeah. There was one time, uh, like you said, I was always hanging out either with Aaron or Austin or something. Well, you had the. Uh, you had like the teal F one fifty, bro. Oh my god, I remember Look, that thing. And this motherfucker had that little piece of trim hanging off. Yeah, oh, about killed a couple of us. <laughs> <laughs> We're on Pine Creek, and he stops randomly. I can't remember where the fuck he was going. He's like, "Hey, y'all want to dip?" And like, Hell bro, yeah. I'm like eleven. It was like, yeah, it's the middle of summer. Fuck right? your life. We up. take a dip. First of all, he. I don't think you was old enough yet to have dip mm-hmm. either. Well, he hands me a dip, and. We're riding the bikes, riding the bikes, riding the bikes, and it hits me, and I'm fucking high off tobacco, dude. Oh, dude. I'm sorry. I wrecked the bike in the ditch, and I start fucking puking, and I left the bike and walked home. Like, it was... <laughs> there was a couple of... There was a couple, like, country fuckers that wrapped around there, but I think you was the predominant one, like the, the younger dude. Oh, yeah, because... Dude, I would just say... I'm like, boy down the street. Yeah. The shock... Oh. I'm boy down the street. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, like, uh, I was all about shock value, bro. Yeah. Like, 
Fuck, dude. Like, if I'm battle rapping a 30 year old and I'm 14, fuck, I'm gonna try and make this motherfucker beat my ass. What's he gonna do? Go to jail? Like, yeah. bro, I'm a kid. Like, I got, I got English homework. Like, fucking leave me alone, bro. Like, and uh, it's okay. weird becoming. It's weird being a rapper from this side of the of like oh, Nashville, yeah. oh, the country. Yeah. Because well, like older people. Well, the older people, like, first of all, it's bullshit. It's the same thing as selling dope. Oh, you want to do music? Motherf- yeah. Motherfucker, what? Like, we're hanging tile tomorrow. Like, you know what I mean? We're hanging drywall. We're, we're laying tile tomorrow. Motherfucker, yeah. we got 2,500 square feet to paint. Like, no, nah, you ain't rapping. Get your ass in the truck. Like, this mm-hmm. light bill's going on, motherfucker. Like, ain't no music. And yeah. It just, like... When I, when I... Dude, at my age, they were like, what the fuck are you doing? You're white. Why are you doing that? And I'm like, bro... I don't know, because I like it. Bro, but... Yeah. That's what a lot of people don't realize, you know. People can say what they want to, but being a country person, uh, you know, being somebody from way down here, where we're from, and being a rapper is hell of frowned upon. Right. At least at least in my time. I'm 31. <coughs> yeah. Well, it was, so, like, one thing about us, bro, like, our, like, addresses, like, for Pond Creek and shit, say Ashton City and mm-hmm. stuff, Right. But we had to go to school in Kingston Springs. So, like, we were legit all over the fucking county on both sides of the river. Like, knew everybody. And so, like, he could be 10 years older than me, like, yeah. and hang out in different cliques. Motherfucker, everybody's partying at Casey Cagle's house. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? So, it's like, we were always. Well, just Google it. Can you Google yeah. it? When it got busted that one time? Oh, dude, it was like um, 2016. <laughs> bro, it was like 2016. Uh, the SRO officer was here and shit at school. I wasn't there. I was too yeah. old by this point. Yeah, no. Well, well they were uh, they were calling, and uh, they come in and bust the party with like a fucking SWAT team, bro. Like they had a fucking paddy wagon. They were gonna put yeah, school bus, didn't they? Yeah, bro. They had a fucking school bus, a paddy wagon, and like every cop on payroll there, bro. Well, like. The news, every motherfucker that was 18 made the news. Like, Levi Irvin oh, made the news. Fucking Austin Howard made the news. Like, And then Casey Cagle. Well, they wanted to get a news interview with Casey Cagle. And Casey Cagle, this motherfucker works from like 5 a.m. to 7 p.m. And after that, he's coming home. He's drinking moonshine. He's drinking vodka. He's smoking weed. We're playing pool, doing something. He ain't getting on the news, I'll tell you that much. (laughs) Well, I'm pretty sure word for word on news, too, this motherfucker said. He did say something? Well, no, like, he was talking, and he Uh was talking shit. He's like, man, this is fucked up. And they're like, who are these kids? And he kept calling everyone at the party his kids. He's Uh like, they're my kids. Like, what? Like, there was 78 kids here. There's 70 people running around. What's going back here? What's going down on Paint Pony, bro? (laughs) But... Oh, yeah. I don't know, dude. It was just like, it was different. And we actually talked about this earlier in the week. Damn sure, like me, Aaron, Austin, Upchurch, like our generation, I really do believe, bro, we were the last generation to have like a really great American childhood. To have fun. Like, like, bro, my parents, and they bitched because they cared, but like, dude, we could go miss it. Yeah. For fucking two days. Yeah, you right? brought that up on your interview about how you could go to the neighbor's house. And just, <coughs> well, yeah. Um, we got, I got kicked off of uh, the bus because I just get off at people's bus stops. You're not allowed to do that. Motherfucker, I've known this person my whole life. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. Hell, you, the pot's over here. Like, I'm not, like, what am I going to do? Get off at my house and walk? <laughs> no. Let me off the bus. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, man. When you decided to rap and become... I'm gonna grab something to drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I want to ask this. Okay. We've heard we've heard from you, but I, I, I'm interested to get Ryan's take too. When he decided he wanted to rap and make it like something, he wanted to do something with it. Mm-hmm. How do you talk about how, like, from your perspective, because you because you kind of helped him get started with all that, right? Okay. Is that how, like, whenever I- that first started? Yeah, I would say, I would say, honestly, I would say he, he really helped himself start. Yeah. But then, you know, after him, you know, seeing him being friends with my, my little brothers, and I knew, I knew, I have one in particular brother. I'm not gonna say his name because he doesn't have social media or anything like that. Yeah. He, my, he's straight up fucking old school. He just beats quiet, plays his guitar, yeah. and don't he hates social media. But 
you know, if that brother in particularly that I have likes somebody, I know that it's for a good reason and they're actually a really good person, you know. Mm. And then I seen him keep wanting to do it and do it. Well, then I seen people on his road, on the road that he lived on, also saying they wanted to do it. But I seen the actions of this person saying they wanted to, and then the actions of him saying he wanted to. You know what I mean? And he wanted it. He wanted it. He wanted the most out of everybody. Yeah. You know. And once you see somebody doing something, you're like, okay. Well, I'm gonna see how long they do it. Yeah. Because it could be for one week. It could be for forever. You never know. And you know, it's all the time. Every time I see my brother, it was like, you know, Stephen rap battled this guy and said this line, or, or yeah, he was at the football games and did this. And I even showed up and seen it myself, you know, because I was meeting some people there for, <clears throat> I was meeting some people there that were out of high school. We were going to support for hometown sake, you know. Yeah. And I'm going to concession stands and I see him over there with a big fucking circle of people, and I was like, what are they doing over there? Mm-hmm. And I walked over there, and sure enough, his ass was rap battling. And I ain't gonna say the line because of what the line was, but I heard up and I'll never forget that one in particular line you said. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck did he just say? Oh, bro. I'm sure it was no one Well, it was like, it was uh, cancelable now. Because, like, bro, these, these folks were older. Like, I was a freshman. Mm-hmm. These motherfuckers were seniors, right? Yeah. Well, they would get so mad. Like, I knew, I was like, hey, man, there's about 50 50% chance I get if my mom picks me up or I get my ass whooped and she gets fucking pissed. Like, and uh, everyone around me was just like, like they were so shocked by it. They're like, nah, motherfucker, you touch this kid, y'all gonna get jumped. Dude, like, well, I remember walking up. I don't mean to cut you off, but I remember, I gotta tell you before I forget. I remember walking up and you said something like, it was like, uh, uh, there's something that rhymed with Hitler. And then you said something, something, I'm gonna burn y'all motherfuckers like Hitler. And I was like, what the hell? Y'all, yeah, dude, like. This is so like this Leroy's is, Will House now. Oh, dude, this is back before you get canceled, bro. Like, yeah. fucking. That was encouraged to say my life. I called a motherfucker. Uh, um, I can't remember how I set it up, but I called it. It was Dalton Raider, man. I don't know what he's doing. Dalton Raider? Bro, d- yeah. I remember him, dude. And they legit called him, fun fact, they called him D Ray. Yeah. And so, like, yeah, shout That's out D Ray, but shout fucking, out. uh. I called him the Fresh Prince of Welfare. <laughs> like, like, and it was at How the How old were you, 14? Oh, yeah. I was old enough to, I was old enough not to know. Bro, like, he was sticking Skittles in his pocket. That's how young he was, bro. Yeah, yeah, bro, and like, everybody rocks champion, bro. This is before champion made the yeah. comeback. And like, browning. Yeah, yeah, bro. Like, oh, dude, like. Mm-mm-mm. We were still wearing Z Starter, bro, and that was 2015, 2016. Like, yeah. <laughs> I used to do a lot of crazy shit out here in the city, like we're in the country, I guess. Ashton City, I used to go. Um, they, they, he, I, his group, we did the same shit, but his group was younger and mine was older. I keep yeah. forgetting. See, you're, you're church. You're between me and him. I'm 38. You're 31. He's 23. Right. So it's like there's like the. Yeah. Yeah, there's like equal amount between So like guys. well I like our first like dealing like it was all in passing. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? He go see his mom or he go see his pops and like I'm chilling with Aaron or fucking me, Aaron and Austin are down the road or mm-hmm. something. Like we were doing our own shit, which I mean like he said it was the same shit, like we had to be secretive about it because we could still get our ass whooped and grounded and stuff, but like bro, we was that's all I'm gonna say. No, you sure. know what I mean. Like sure. we was older, we already knew the ways. Yeah, we we wasn't getting caught with nothing. Yeah, hell, if anything, we was covering. I know I was covering for my brother sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which means I was probably covering for you too. Oh yeah. Well, there's been several. <laughs> I'm <laughs> like, sure. I used to. Uh, I used to stash my shit in Aaron's room. Like when I knew oh, I was gonna yeah. get in trouble or whatever. It was like <laughs> fuck it. Like my dad didn't like, care. Ronnie ain't going to check. Ronnie he ain't walk in and see if you're alive and be like, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, so yeah. So when you started, you dropped the first project in 2019, right? Yeah. And at that point, church, you had already been doing. You had already probably. You was probably four years in easily. Yeah, four. And you, so you had already can had <coughs> seen big success in that four year time frame. Yeah. So you kind of had some stuff. I'm sure you had some like tips and advice with him, especially being a newer artist. So and. You just, the mm-hmm. co-sign that you gave him was a good right. start for you, but he had to keep going, though. Man, I can't even lie, Chad. I fucking still don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm really right. winging it, dude. Like, and we, we have talks about it all the time, uh, you know, even then and now. 
And what have I always said when someone said, bro, what's a blueprint? What do I always say? There is no blueprint. Yeah. I say, there ain't one. Really, yeah. if there is, I don't fucking know about it because right. when you really look at it, and we've had, we've had talks the past three days about this exact thing until seven in the morning, that the fucking <coughs> the music industry is forgetting how to connect with the people that's listening to the music, bro. Yeah. You know, they don't know. They're forgetting what... I don't even like saying it like that. It's not that they're forgetting how to be they regular. They don't care. No, it's, it's, what I'm saying is they... They forgot how to relate to us, bro. Mm-hmm. Country doesn't uh, assist... I don't mean to get off on country music, but yeah, yeah. country music does not assist a country listener in Nashville. It don't. It assists TikTok. Right. And that's a, that's the thing that sets people like us apart, bro, because <coughs> we're not we're not aiming for a chart position. We're not aiming for a spot on the radio. Or we're not fighting for those things. We're fighting for people like us, bro. Right. Because think about it, dude. And I don't know how I even got off on this, but just play this been on my mind lately, but they're not showing any love to the hometown people. And now you're seeing hometown people do mainstream shit. And if hometown people are doing mainstream shit, then how, what does that do for the hometown people? It's even worse, bro. Right, right. It, like I said the other night, if they don't care about fucking, you know, so-and-so in Nashville, they're not going to give a fuck about Larry in Minnesota, bro. Yeah, bro. So yeah. why are you coming here? Yeah, man. And I don't even know how I fucking got off on that tangent, no, bro. No, because well, I... I, I, I I brought up you giving him right. advice. Well, when so like yeah. the cool thing about it too is like the same shit we're talking about now is the advice he gave me when we first started. Yeah. yeah. Like fucking, hey man, be you. Like the shit you do on a daily basis and the shit you're around, that's what a real motherfucker wants to see. Yeah, look like, around us. Yeah, yeah, like, um, you know, uh, Bro, we're sitting across from a liquor store right now. Hell yeah. Where people stumble there every night and fucking grab one yeah. of my truck to fucking get across the road and like, yo, the place is closed. Well, that and like, Ashland City has changed, man, and it's changed in the sense he said something to me because I've been in Florida fucking uh, working and yeah. uh, fucking church tells me, he goes, man, Ashland City's like, what's well, Nashville now in 04? I was like, what do you mean? He's like, bro, all the crackheads moved here. I was like, get the mm-hmm. fuck out. Well, the first night I'm back and I'm down here, I'm thinking like, well, goddamn, there's my cousin. Well, goddamn, you know, <laughs> goddamn, there's Terrell, dude. What are you doing, man? Like, it's just gotten, it's, it's like it's, it's migrating from the nations to out this way. Well, the nations got taken over, son. Yeah. 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 <coughs> you and know what's bad when you're from there and you got to look at street signs to see where you're at. Yeah. Bro, when I met, when I met Jelly, and the nations was a very different place. I met Jelly in no in no five. Right. So like what you were saying, West Nashville four. <clears throat> Back yeah. when everybody wore XL white t shirts and that six one five tattoo on their neck. Absolutely. And they would cut your bitch ass. Like fucking first. Bro, sure. McCoy, uh, the McCoys were always mm-hmm. sitting across from Pet Field down the street from Butcher's Barbershop, right before you go over the bridge to go towards like uh like Freedom Avenue and all that. Yeah. Bro, well, it's crazy, like, I don't know. It's race cars in the front yard. Sorry, man, I ain't going to cut you off, but, like, people in the front yard working on fucking race cars for Highland Rim. Yeah. You know? Yeah. All that good shit, like, man. But the thing is, dude, like, and people got drunk and had fights and shit like that, but everybody knew each other. Like, they wasn't going to let an outsider fuck with someone else's shit. Yeah. Like, uh, it's crazy, bro. Like, we had a guy that bought an ice cream truck. And only drove around the nations. And that motherfucker paid a house and lived in that house. Like, solely doing that. And, like, nowadays you go over there. I think the only thing still there is, like, Levert's. Bro, I actually went and checked the house that uh, my dad used to live in. We used to go to my dad's house on the weekends. Yeah. And uh, it's actually uh, its own standalone house on New York Avenue. It's the only one still there. Yeah, man. And it's only a limited it's well, only time for it gone. It's like I told you the other day, bro. My, uh... My grandmother sold her house in 2017, right? Like, it was a little two-room two shack they built during the Vietnam War that fucking didn't get fucking taken care of, you I'm know? Here. And they lived it, like, uh, when she sold <coughs> that house, four, within four days, they had a shotgun house put up. Like, yeah. four days, bro. That's they why tore it. important, bro. Yeah, man, they yeah. tore it down and had another structure all but fucking, they were, they were halfway through framing it. 
in four days, man. Like that's like it ain't the same by a long shot. Like everybody that lives there is out of town. No, for sure. It's crazy how that's changed. Like you know what pisses me off, bro? What? This is what pisses me off. Sorry to cut you off, Chad. No, you're good, Bubba. There's a huge gap in history, bro. From 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 look at 2005 to now. In Nashville music, there's a huge missing fucking gap. Right. That did not get picked up by anyone. Right. Why? Bro, why the fuck did they do that? Well, I now I don't know like why and the motive was, but like dude, everybody that was doing music then, like, there were some Nashville motherfuckers. Like, they had to do shit. You know what I mean? They weren't, like... They definitely weren't fucking mainstream. I tell you this. I went to Broadway last <coughs> week, bro. And I was like, what in the fuck? You used to have to look around and watch people when you went downtown. You used to have to be like, take someone with you and be like, hey, watch my back. We're going to go down second. We're going to go to fucking Hooters. Yeah. And when we come out, this dude on the street corner on Gay Street parking lot is acting fucking funny over here. Like he's going to rob somebody. You used to have to stay on your toes. Bro, nobody has to stay on your toes in Nashville no more when it comes to tourists and, and being on Broadway, bro. Right. There's nothing that makes people badass. There's nothing that makes people cool. They're, no one's doing that. Right. They're getting VIP sections. They're going in the fucking back. They're never coming <coughs> out. And it's just fucking nuts, dude. Yep. It's nuts. It's like, it's like, and, and where it's at now, look at people like us. They go downtown, we get drunk, we fucking, we act wild and do cool shit. Bro, when we're down there doing it, everyone's looking at us like we're fucking crazy. And I'm like, you're in Nashville, bro. Like, yeah, yeah. let's get rowdy. Well, like, yeah. and one thing yeah. we've, like, we've always picked up on, like, man, if you want to know how to spot a tourist in fucking Nashville, look for a motherfucker in a cowboy hat. Facts. And sure. a fucking belt buckle. Facts. Everything's going to have a fucking tag on it. Like, dude, yeah. I ain't never wore a button-down shirt in Nashville. Shut the fuck up. Like, on Broadway. I have. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, look, I, it's either a Hanes t-shirt, you, you know what I mean, or yeah. something like that. And that Hanes t-shirt is stained, bro. There's yeah. something... Like, I can tell by what alleys and what fucking streets they stumble down by themselves. Yeah. Sometimes I'll be seeing a girl by herself, and this is dead ass, bro. I've done this before. I see a girl stumbling way the fuck down by the old police station underneath the bridge, yeah. uh, past Hooters, and I'll pull over and be like, what are you doing? Yeah. Why are you by yourself right here underneath this dark ass fucking bridge, you dumb idiot? And she's like, well, I parked up here. It's like, you ain't from here. Yeah, <laughs> for sure, definitely not. Uh, fuck, man. That, I mean, <clears throat> hey, if this interview's all fucked up, man, it's it's sorry, it's two in the morning, we just kicking. No, it's good, it's fine. You're good. What I was gonna, so what I was gonna say too, when you when he started, mm -hmm. how serious? Like at the time, did you think? Well, this will be. He's gonna put something out, and it'll just kind of be what it is. Or did you think that it was he was gonna take it serious as he has? I wanted to see. Yeah. Pretty much, I just want. I wanted to see because I felt alone. For such a long time as an artist from around here that was like I was. And there was a point where I was like, man, is there any more of us? Mm -hmm. Like, is there any is there anybody else that, that I'm going to be able to talk to and that can relate to what I'm saying? And, you know, my visions of Nashville being born here, yeah. you know, in a hospital downtown. And honestly, I'll tell you the truth. I just found out that answer is yeah in the past three days of chilling with him. Mm -hmm. I, always, I always knew there was something about him, and I think it was the drive and how he visioned things and how he talked about stuff. Like, when people talk about something, I can tell if they're really interested or not. And I knew he was interested. Yeah. And three days ago, and what, are you, what, are you 23? Yeah. You're only 23, bro. You're still young as fuck, dude, right? That's you you were just able to fucking drink yeah. a beer legally. Yeah. So my thing is, is at age 23, the past three days we've been hanging out, what you've told me, bro, it has inspired the shit out of me. Oh, and, bro, I don't get inspiration from nobody. Yeah. <clears throat> but it's because of what he wants to do. It's because the things he tells me he does with his money. And when you got a 23-year-old saying, man, I tell you what, I, I can show you. And it's not that I'm, I'm not giving him any money. He's making yeah. all his own fucking money. He's been in Florida for a year. Yeah. But when he's coming to me, he's like, and, bro, I can tell you. And show you where every dollar I fucking yeah. have has went and what it's went towards and what I've done with it. I don't know any 23-year-olds in the music industry that are saying that shit. Right. 
For sure. Right. Well, it like, I mean, the simplest way I can put it is like, dude, like, to get started, mm-hmm. I had to get it out the mud. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. I had to do shit. So when I finally got to a position like, hey, man, all right, well, TuneCore, I know for a fact, can pay my light bill. I know it can pay... Uh, my car insurance. I know it can do that. And I know I'm going to get that payment. Get eggs and milk and bread. Yeah. You know, know, and all this other stuff. Well, then it's like, okay, um, when do I take this seriously in the sense of like, stop all the dumb shit Mm -hmm. and really double down on it? And like, hey man, I did it. And it's like, you know, you start out, maybe you don't make a lot of money, but Mm -hmm. as long as you're making something and you can cover something with it, like, that was enough drive for me. Yeah, yeah, for you sure. You know, and like, also, you know, also, people like us, we're raised on stretching shit, bro. Yeah, man. making shit stretch. Yeah, like right. you I'll, take 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 somebody like us, and then let's take somebody who moved here from who know, who fucking knows where, that's living in Nashville. You, you know what I'm talking about? <coughs> that's racking up a bill at a record label for thirty five hundred yeah. dollars a month on their yeah. shit. Yeah. Here's and here's the metaphor. Out here, some people buy cartons of eggs. Some people buy two roosters and seven hens. Right. Which one are you? Shit, I yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got fish. And, and I don't understand why they're not, why people down there is, uh, what is, the, what, is the, what is the point of not recognizing it? You ain't got to fucking like it, but, bro, whether you like it or not, you got to recognize it. Right. You have no choice. Or you're going to look like a fucking idiot later on in life for not recognizing it. And that's why every legend who's ever come out of Nashville, that's why they don't care about them when they're alive and they care about them when they're dead, bro. Well, guess what? It's a fucking new day and age. There's people getting cared about while they're alive. And they're going to get cared about more after they're fucking dead. Either you're going to fucking respect them or not. Because let me tell you, if you're not... You getting shit on later in fucking in the, yeah, later in life, bro. Yeah. yeah, and well, and like, like you know, going into that, like, what's the fucking point, right, mm-hmm. of signing your name on a paper, signing away your rights to something, mm-hmm. and then like you're not getting paid. You have a, you have a roof over you. Mm-hmm. You're getting billed for at the end of the year. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's like when you should have started with yeah. a lean two. Yeah, and it's like what the like what the fuck's the point? Like I know, okay, like he said, stretching it. Like even to this day, like these motherfuckers go out and do shit. Like bro, I know if we got it's money piece, slavery. Exactly. Like buy you a loaf of bread, buy you a fucking pound of bologna, and go the fuck to work. Like, you know why? Because you can't skip levels, bro. If you skip levels. Listen, if you're 16 years old and you just got your license, you better not hop in a fucking Mustang that has six gears in it because you're going to fucking wreck. Right. But if you started out with a Ford Taurus and then a fucking V6 and then a V8 and then, a, you know, this, that, and the other and worked your way up, you're going to drive that motherfucker just fine, better than everybody else rather than just getting thrown into one. Yeah. You well, know? And that's like... Go ahead and say it. I know what you're going to say. It's a, it's a good thing. Artists need well, to know that. Well, it's like... like not skipping a step in the process, right? Like, yeah. I've learned so much, and like, not to toot my own fucking horn, man, but it's like... Toot it, bro. Fuck, ain't nobody gonna toot it for us. I got a fucking, like, I mean, I just, I, I get it now. Like, it's, all right, you gotta do this. If you don't do it like this, you're gonna be fucked off and back to square one. You're gonna regret it, too. Yeah. As like, a national native, you're gonna regret it, bro. Yeah, man. And it's like... Nashville, we've had some success stories, but it's like, dude, I got I got pages of motherfuckers I can show you that had a buzz for a little bit, right? Yeah. But all this extra shit derailed them. <clears throat> right? Yeah. And they're fuck, you know, like. Yeah. And I mean, Nashville's the. I don't know about now, but it was always a small town city still. Like, the motherfuckers, like, even talking about the fucking nations, bro, motherfuckers didn't get along, but they could tell you who the fuck lived where. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And nowadays, it's like... you know, here's I think here's what you're trying to say. You know what separates somebody who's living it and then somebody who's dressing it? A bad situation. 
Yeah. If you living around here and you say you're all, you're this big tough fucking country singer, well, let's let a bad situation pop up. Yeah. And let's see who's who, bro. And you know what? They make it to where that can't happen. Yeah. Man. Because they can't let it happen. Right. Do you know what it would look, bro? Imagine this. And you know what? If he sees it, I don't fucking care. You live fucking 20 minutes that way, dude. The dude that I'm about to talk about. Let's say, let's say I, I bump into Morgan Wallen one day, right? In Cheatham County at Finches or something in Pegram. And I walk up to him and I have somebody film me go, Hey, remember when you FaceTimed me and called me? And I smacked the fucking shit out of him and he doesn't do anything? Or if he does do something, now he has to fight me. Right. And he is fighting for an Instagram post. I'm fighting because he called me something that I don't fucking like and he moved into my motherfucking town. Right. Who do you think's gonna win? Right. Do you see what I'm saying? Right. The person who's pissed off more. And they can't have something like that happen because as soon as that happens, they're not, no country motherfucker is, is, is gonna buy, half of them's not gonna buy that shit no more. Because no. one, I ain't been a little hoe. And been like, oh my god, he called me this. I ain't never told nobody that. It's the first time I've ever said that. Right. And that was during the chain thing. Yeah. But. So what, what, what sorry, what time frame is that? Did that have, you know, remember was it was last year? Uh, yeah. It was during the, it was around the time of the release of uh, uh, that Broadway Girls remix. Okay. Me and my old lady, she's laying in there right now. Uh, hell, fuck it. Hey, baby! She ain't gonna lie for me, bro. I promise you that. Beth, come here, honey. Shout out to Church and Leroy. <laughs> oh, dude. Look at this three-fourths mustache. Dude, this guy was fixing to say something. Finna go to Highland Ramble. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you don't have to. You don't have to get in the frame, but you have to verify that what I'm saying is true because I just want you to. Uh, do you remember when we were laying in bed that one time, and I FaceTimed Morgan Wallen, and he had like three people in the background. He was like, "Hey, yeah, yeah, okay." Thank you, honey. And what? Why? Why did he do that? Because he loves TikTok or something. I don't know. So he was trying to. Get, <laughs> he was trying to get a. He just called you and was just trying to get a rise out of you or something. I, I don't really know because he kept texting me and I was like, "What's up, dude?" And uh, he ended up FaceTiming me, and I answered the phone. I was already in bed, and I answered the phone. There was like two guys in the background uh, with V-neck shirts on, and him. He's like, <laughs> and I said. What did you say? He's like, I'm just kidding. And I was like, what do I say at this point? You're acting like a 13 year old. You're acting like, I can't even say you're acting like my little brother. My little brother is more mature than that. I mean, you're a grown fucking man. What do you, you have a mustache. Why are you calling me saying it's really weird? Especially for someone out here. It's like, you call me when you have a flat tire at fucking 12 at night. You don't call me to go, hey. That's kind of weird, dude. So, it's just that mentality. It's like, hey, dude, you're living in my motherfucking county now. You're living in Cheatham County. Luke Combs is living in Cheatham County. I don't see you motherfuckers outside anytime. Right. And I'm riding around this bitch all the time on a Harley. Oh, yeah. And you're going to talk all this shit. And then, you know, and then not only that, then during this time, shun me at the club when, motherfucker, I trying to hang out with you. I'm trying to go outside on the balcony and talk to people that listen to my music, dude. Fuck you. You should be doing the same fucking thing. Yeah. But no, you're in the green room. But when you look at all these different things, it's like, look at who this fucking person is. He's the fucking rich kid in school that made fun of fucking people because they weren't wearing expensive shoes. That's who you are. If you're calling me saying and then you're fucking, you're hiding in the back of the club and shit, and I'll never see you out yet. Yeah, you a rich kid who's talking shit. That's all you are. I like your music, but I mean, I don't have to fucking hang out with your music. I have to listen to it. So I don't really care. Right. I like your music, but that's the attitude of these people, bro. But and you know what? When you have somebody like that, that has a circle around them, there's people from Nashville that just want a percent off of whatever the fuck you're finishing on the radio. When shit hits the fan... Who is going to have that dude's back? A bunch of fucking sissy writers? Uh, well, you better check and fuck and see who you're talking shit to and who's around them because, motherfucker, I don't hang out with sissy writers, bro. I don't even hang out with writers in Nashville. So, 
That's where I stand with that shit, and that's what's got me so pissed off lately, bro. Well, it's just like, I think... Uh, Not Morgan problem. Wiley, but the fucking, the, the atmosphere of Nashville right, right now. Right. Well, I think, it, bro, a lot of it's just social media, and like, I think social media is one of the best things in the world and one of the fucking worst things in the Absolutely, world. Absolutely, no, You know, sure. like, and it's like, motherfuckers think they can say whatever they want with a keyboard, and like you said, be 20 minutes away. It's like, motherfucker, when you have a quarter tank of gas, where are you mm. going to stop and get gas? Teeters like, or Lake View. Yeah, the, exactly. Like, well, sicko. Like, like, real life's going to hit you one day, and it's like, bro, motherfucker. It, it gives them a false pretense yeah. of reality. Yeah, like, bro, how's a publicist going to fix you getting snatched up at Finches, bro? Yeah. Yeah. They're not gonna fix it. There's only, there's only so much makeup you can put on a black eye, bitch. Like, fuck. Hey, and not only that, bro. When you start when you start poking at somebody like that, and when you're living in their town, when all you've done is fight for the town the whole time, yeah, it's not gonna be just that time, motherfucker. It's gonna be every time I see you. Yeah, it ain't just gonna be that time. You better start fucking looking for another house, type shit. And you know what? Somebody done went and told him. That's why he ain't fucking said not one goddamn word, and that's why he quit fucking texting me when I said, don't fucking text me no more. Because he knows now. Somebody done told his ass. And you know what? Good for them. You better be looking for another house, motherfucker, because if I see you, I don't fucking like you. I'm going to try to smack you. You might beat me up. Who fucking knows? I doubt it, but you might. Well, don't matter to me. Like, Ed, like, the majority of people nowadays don't, like, have that fucking comprehension like dude I ain't a bad motherfucker at all I've had my ass Me neither. multiple times several times more often than not but with that being said dude a lot of these motherfuckers that is competition ain't never been hit you know what I mean they ain't never had a confrontation they haven't had to go out of the way it ain't way, about but, being badass like you're yeah, saying it's about not no. being scared it's Don't about scaring me out of my spot it's about standing on whatever you believe in and do Standing up for yourself and the people like you, bro. Yeah, man, like... Just like tonight, when I fucking called Chase out for his stupid fucking bullshit, what does that... Remember that one comment I read? And I was like, are you serious? Yeah. This dude said, fuck up church and all his dirty trailer dwelling something. And I said, motherfucker, what's wrong with the trailer? People that live in trailers is buying Chase's yeah. fucking music, dude. Yeah. So you're making fun of where they live while they buy your shitty fucking shit. Right. Yeah, fuck that, dude. Nah, not on my people, bro. Well, and it's like, people get judged nowadays for like, like you said, it's like some high school shit. Like, motherfucker, if you're a grown motherfucker, why are you worried about someone else's shoes? Go take care of somebody, motherfucker, with the money you're making from your music. Like, hell yeah, they're muddy, motherfucker. I live on a hill. Like, it's muddy, motherfucker. Yeah. Do you think that, do y'all think that Nashville can get back some of that stuff it used to have or do you think it's kind of bro they ain't got a fucking choice yeah they ain't got a choice bro with what I got cooking up right now oof I get fired up over that shit I get it man I, I get I get the frustration for sure well it just like I don't know man bro it's disrespectful to Nashville I don't I, give a fuck what nobody says I get fed up just being like I I want to be genuine like, I have to be genuine. Mm-hmm. That's part of me. Like, this isn't a fucking character, bro. No. Somebody didn't write the description of Leroy Biggs out and fucking do it the same way they didn't do it. For What'd you say last night? You said, you said, if anybody was fucking perfect, they'd have been hung up on a cross thousands of years ago. Yeah, bro. If you was made to be perfect, you would have fucking done did the, you know, yeah. 2,000 years ago. and. Well, you're definitely, I mean, it's definitely not a character. We, we talk every day for almost two years, and it's like, right. I would have thought if it was a character, you would have accidentally broken it. Mm-hmm. You never, you know what I mean? Yeah. Facts. Like, I mean. The lighter side. Right. Well, right. Yeah, yeah. For sure. <laughs> yeah. For but sure. it's just one of those things, like, and people are so fucking blind to it, dude. Half the time, they don't even know they're doing it. And it's like, motherfucker, like. You have to know you're pissing someone off, and they're just so fucking oblivious to it. They like, think it's a game, bro, but what they don't realize is they don't realize it because they're making so much money that they don't give a fuck. Money has blinded who they are, and they probably entered the job they have because it was passed down from somebody that was fucking kin to them. And the thing is, is these people who are 
getting famous and fucking representing this shit and 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 sly talking shit. Dude, they're country singers because they lost on a fucking a, a, a TV show like Survivor or something. You know what I mean? They're not. They're not from. They're not in the. They're not walking to the fucking H and H in West Nashville and trying to figure out how to get a car, bro. That's a song. Songs should not have to have ten fucking people in a room writing them. It should be something that somebody lived through that was either fun, fucking depressing, or crazy as shit. Well, dude, we were just talking about that. Or lovey dovey. We came over here. <laughs> we came over here and uh, we made a fucking song, dude. In an hour and a fucking half. Oh, and bro! It's, it's called it, "Returning the Favor." Is it the one that y'all posted on that? That like you play a sing a clip of it? Oh yeah, I think yeah, I did. Yeah, no, yeah. Actually, hell yeah, that's just dope. And it, but it's like it was us in here. Can I show you? Uh, I don't care if it's recording. This is, this is gonna come out. Uh, October 28th, uh, and you don't have to promote it or nothing. I, I ain't trying to get you to do that. Literally, but, bro. Oh, goddamn. I just want to show you, I want to show you uh, kind of the the area I'm going in. The area I'm going in yeah. with this shit. Shout out you. <laughs> yeah. You who sponsored me, bro. I won't say nothing bad while I'm holding it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I'm so glad I get to tell you this. Because... I know that your shit don't get deleted and you fucking, you don't sit there and be like, oh, I gotta delete this. No, you just keep everything there. That's what I fucking like about you, bro. I know we don't talk a lot, but I want you to know that I fucking respect you for what you do and for how fucking long you did it. And hey, if y'all don't know, Chad's been doing this a long motherfucking time. Yeah, yeah, appreciate that, bro. No problem. I get it, man. You're a busy dude, man. I don't know how it goes. I'm an angry dude this month. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's Thank the kind you. of country I like to listen to. Like, mm-hmm. Nine East Country is my favorite shit. But it's, yes. all, it's all like a fucking, like, dude, real shit. Mm. It's all like a fucking folktale, man. No, for sure. Like, it's folklore. But it ain't for one person, bro. No, it's, it's not. It's for thousands of people. Yeah, man, yeah. like. <laughs> hey, oh, yeah. You own us up with that one, dog. Which was the name of that album? Uh. I don't know. Don't know just, I'm just, just fucking. I'm too. ninja starring, dude. I'm just ninja fucking ninja, ninja star. star. We watched that clip on the old episode. Yeah, dude. Day day. Fucking dip game Bro. ninja star. I remember that. That's why I said. I said uh, it would be cool just how he did it, and he wasn't even thinking of like that because he was fucking like. I was shitting on myself, bro. Does, bro, like. I, I was like, what am I these fucking people? He just, like, bro, I think you should call the motherfucking album Trouble and the album cover be... Be my guess. license, bro. The back should be my license in the Trouble function. would be a... That'd be a great title. Dude, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't even think of it like that. The back should be your license, right? Move the license picture and put the fucking list of names and songs on the other side of the license. Boom. You just gotta be careful with your new Tennessee license because there's like a hidden code in that yeah, somewhere right. that's gonna be used. <laughs> But or maybe, maybe you could just or if you can do yeah. the have somebody do a mock up of like the <coughs> way the license looked when yeah. you were born, Ooh. like like the old Tennessee driver's license. Oh my god, that or an old Tennessee birth certificate, the baby blue birth certificates we yeah. all had. Ooh, trouble. Yeah. Damn, dude. Hey, Steve, Steve, hey, could you could you slide in? Hey, hey man, my name's Steve. Mom. I'm high as shit. <laughs> Good. I'm sorry. Kill Chad again. Good job. Hey, man. Hey. Do the hat thing. Do the... Hey, man. Hey. Hey, yeah, yeah. 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 My name's Steve and I'm high as shit. Yeah, bro. Fuck. We ain't got shit to lie You never open your eyes either. Uh-uh. Look. That is great. It's classic. <laughs> Holy shit. There, bro. Dude. So what, are you, what are you thinking of his new stuff that you heard? Bro, I know I'm stuck on this one song, dude. Yeah. And I'm just, I'm stuck on that one song. That yeah. song's got to come out for me to pay attention to any of the other ones. It's that fucking badass to me. Yeah. Like, he just... No like, offense, but I'm just... No, like, no, 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 no. It's no. that good to me. That, no, that, dude, that's a comment. He just, he, he thinks... Yeah, he's no, good. like, I just, as soon as he started explaining what he saw for it, it was the exact same shit we saw for it. And, and that yeah. song is called uh, County Jail. County Jail, yeah. It's a banger. Uh, I, yeah. But even then, dude, 
it's on some fucking real shit. Like, yeah. people out here's gonna relate to it, and that's yeah, what matters, bro. bro. Yeah, man. You got, yeah. They wanna, they wanna turn the fucking Spotify playlist or whatever on. They wanna pull up something that is dim, dude. Yeah. And bro. that's 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 people like us, bro. And and the one that you dropped is is sober is a great one too, bro. I told mm-hmm. you that from the jump, bro. That it was just. It's very fine line of doing something like that, and it's dope as fuck or corny. It's very fine line. Right. Yeah. And you, and a lot of times people don't even mean for it to be corny. It's mm-hmm. kind of to me it is. Well, that is a not. It's not a corny. Like you, you knew exactly how to do. Well, that. I think what a lot of people do, like, because I do traditional rap shit, mm-hmm. but like people want to dance around the the country rap. Like yeah, there's yeah. a stigma to it, or they do it with fucking trucks and. You know, Real they generic, make it like, yeah, yeah. and all that shit, but it's like, no, man, like, this is country rap. Fuck you. Like, yeah. it may come with a stigma. Listen to it, though. What the fuck would you call it? Like, well, right. that's the thing, man. They, they did make it so hard to lasso what is that because they're like, it's this, it's not this, it's this. Yeah. I've even been like, you know what? Fuck it. I give up. What is it? Like, right. yeah. what is it? Like, and it's like, it, but it still resonates. Like, I don't care who you are, bro. Mm-hmm. Right? Everybody has a family member that's in and out of the fucking county jail, and half the time they get in more trouble in the jail. Right. You know, like, fuck, hey, yeah, they love me in the county jail, hell. You know what I mean? Like, fuck, bro, what am I, what I got a lot about? Hell yeah, they know me. I smile in a mugshot, dude, fuck. Yeah. Well, you tell the story about that one time that you went to jail and how it was like. Oh, the, for, oh, no, yeah. for the pipe, dude, like, I got yeah. caught on an yeah. ROR, that means uh, you gotta go and turn yourself in, yeah. and they let you out, like, mm-hmm. side on release right. or some shit. Bro, I go in there, and I'm flirting with the, the lady, and I was like, no, nah, I'm here, she's like, you here to bail somebody out? And I was like, well, you bail me out, because I'm here to go in, and, <laughs> and talking to them, well, they walked me back there, man, and the guard station has all, like, 30 inmates, in the fucking holding cells, right? Were they're you all, No, it's Dixon. Oh. And they're all, like, they done fucking got in trouble or whatever. Mm-hmm. I walk in. Everyone gets quiet. All these inmates look at me, and, like, seven of them go, What up, Leroy? Every guard in that motherfucker's <laughs> looking at me like I'm a gang leader. It's like, Bro. dude, y'all have fucked me. <laughs> like, hold on, man. Dude, a month ago, I had to go turn myself in, bro. And I went to, you can, hey, anybody's watching this, you can Google it. I had to go turn myself in, and when I did, I went down there, whatever. You go in, they got this guy standing here by his fucking thumb machine, this lady on the other side. Then there's one jail cell. I walked in, there was a dude fucking pressing his fucking face, like, through the bars, just looking. Eyeballs, this fucking big around. This guard dude comes around the corner, he goes, hey, up church. And I was like, what's up, man? He's like, I gotta have your thumb. <laughs> and I was like, all right, man. He goes, this won't take long, I swear to God. He does my little thing, he's like, hey, man, I love your music, bro. And, he, and it's the guy sitting there doing my finger, my thumbprint, and I was like, "This is fucking cool, man." Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that's how you know you're where you're supposed to be. Right. You're liked about the people who have uh, good reputations and bad reputations. It's not just bro. either one, bro. When you have captured, you know, uh, the attention and the respect from both sides, that's mm-hmm. how you know you're doing something that is bigger than yourself. Well, that's and dude, it's how you know like it's still a legit small town, like. Inmates across the country has got numbers, right? Yeah. Inmates here go off their names. Because motherfuckers, they just know. It's, yeah. you know, people like... People really know more, more about going to jail than I do. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> like, but, like, it's... Yeah. Motherfuckers are raised here. Even him. Look, look at what this motherfucker's done. He was raised here. He got famous here. Fuck Ryan. And now he's church. fucking globetrotting here, bro. And it's yeah. like... Everyone else is that works and is from here does that. Like, if you go to jail mm-hmm. when you're 20 and you go to jail when you're 50, you're going to the same fucking jail. And half the time, those guards are working there still. Like, yeah. Or, or like out here, you know, I don't know how it is for other rappers, but you always hear these stories about how they get around people who want to just all leech off of them and shit, right? Yeah. Bro, I know fucking farmers that make more than I do. Yeah. They got bigger car collections than I do. They don't need nothing from me but to sit around and hang out. Like, yeah. there's working motherfuckers around here, bro. Right. Well, and half those motherfuckers, like, how, dude, y'all, y'all have either been here or West Nashville your whole fucking life. Like, everybody knows everybody. Like, mm-hmm. I know motherfuckers that don't know me, 
but know my mom from 20 years ago. Know my dad from 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. No fucking, you know, like... I went to school with your mama. Yeah, yeah. Tell your mama I said, what's up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that all the time, bro. Do, Ryan, do you... I know that you have because you've spoken about it, but how frustrating is it for you dealing with people that are constantly... How does it? How is is it for you to try to differentiate people you surround yourself with that aren't trying to just leech off of you? Has that been something that you've had to? Oh man, I'm horrible at that. I, I've been so horrible with seeing what's what for so long, but I can honestly say, I think everybody who's subscribed to my YouTube channel can kind of see. Uh, I think I'm in a different phase of who I am. I think in a sense I'm understanding uh, I'm understanding how powerful I am and how uh, much pull I have with what I say, mm -hmm. but I also haven't realized, you know, I haven't really realized, I mean, he said it the other day, he's like, motherfucker, he's like, because I, I, I was questioning myself, and I was like, dude, I'm not on the outside, I can't see, I need someone else to tell me that's on the outside so I know what I am, because if, if, yeah, <laughs> so if Nashville's not... If, if you're not on this thing that shows you what you are and they're actually kicking you off of it and then you're out here alone doing this job that hardly no one else has mm -hmm. so there's no one to talk to you really don't know where you stand so you have to have an outside perspective and he's like dude he's like think about this motherfucker he's like Leroy said look at everybody who uh, you know gets rich and famous and shit he's like what do they do they buy fucking, they buy property in California and beach houses. He's like, your goofy ass bought five houses within 11 miles of each other. Yeah. He's like, that says who you are, bro. He's like, dude, we're sitting in a studio right now from the fucking 1800s across from a liquor store. Mm -hmm. He's like, you're not realizing it because you never left it. So in a sense, I know where I'm at. I know where I stand. And I know... Now, I've, in a sense, gone... I don't want to say gone back to my roots, but I guess watered the fuck out of them in the past, like, three months. And it's it's made me a different artist. And nowadays, somebody asks me for something or wants something, I'm like, no, nah, dude, I, I, I don't know you like that. You know? You, I, I, you're not Leroy. You can't... You're not Leroy. You're not, you know, Chad. You can't fucking come over and hang out at, at two in the morning, I don't know you like that. Or or say <coughs> one of my close friends is like, hey bro, I'm in a tight spot, can I borrow 500 bucks? No questions asked, here you go. Cause you've done a lot of shit for me mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm supposed to do a lot of shit for you, that's what a community is. But I'm not out here touching dinglings with all these fucking people I don't know in Nashville, bro. Yeah. Just like, I mean, I'll say it on here, I don't care, I ain't got no problem with the kid, I feel sorry for him, but fucking kid G. Kid G's last good song was Passing Through, bro. No offense if you're watching this, but that was your last good song if you ask me. But look where that song was produced and written and look who it was with. It was with people in your hometown. It was about your hometown, filmed in your hometown, just like B. Loose has been filming me for the past six years. People resonate with that. And what they do? They uprooted him. They stuck some hip-hop artists with him. Because they're like, fuck yeah, dude, country rap, smack that shit together, it's gonna taste great. And it sounds like shit. Mm -hmm. It sounds fake, dude. Yeah. What? Because these people don't know. They don't know where they stand because they don't know what they stand for, dude. They're standing for numbers. Yeah. A number can't fucking come change your tire and help you and fucking be there for you when somebody fucking dies. Well, <laughs> one way I thought it was funny, like. Like, this motherfucker's a country motherfucker. Like, mm -hmm. what has he gone and bought in his career? This motherfucker went and bought trees. <laughs> really? Like, he went and bought trees, man. Like, he told me that the other night when I was high as fuck, and I was like, <laughs> damn, you're right, bro. I yeah. did buy trees. Like, goes to Nashville, gets so pissed at Nashville, moves 20 minutes further into the fucking game reserve. Like, <laughs> like, that's just who you are, bro. Like, in, yeah. I mean, but I get what you're saying because you're so, you're so who you are that you don't, I guess, realize that stuff you say is going to get seen because you're not thinking about that when you're doing it. Right. You're just wanting to express how you feel, mm -hmm. and you're not 
you're so comfortable with yourself that you're like, well, mm-hmm. I'm just going to say it. Yeah. But then there's so many, there's millions of people. It's just, how do you even wrap your head around that or can you? I've accepted, the reach I've accepted this, bro. Well, uh, to answer uh, your other thing real quick. Yeah. Out here, when I say something, there's a hundred people standing beside me that go, hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Say the same thing down there. There's going to be a hundred people looking at you going, oh my God, what? We need to fucking get the PR team here. Yeah. That's the difference. And and what was your second question? Just about how, like, um, have you been able to wrap your head around the reach that you actually have? Because it's, it's, it's crazy. Like, in a good thing, it's a good and bad thing, I guess. Yeah. Um, see, that's another thing that's been heavily on my mind lately that I, even I asked him about. And the thing is, is I would rather have an enormous reach. I've accepted this. Mm-hmm. I look at these people that they stick in Nashville and I'm like, man, you have a humongous reach of people you don't fucking know. Of people that don't fucking know you. I have a humongous reach of people who know me and guess what? I know them. Mm-hmm. So, number wise, do I know how big I am? Not really, bro, because I really don't have nothing to gauge it with Right. Do I know that the, do I know that it's okay and it's right and I'm not going to get burnt as long as I be truthful with the people who are truthful with me? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's why I ain't scared, bro. Make it as big as you want. I've already decided with myself what I'm doing with the rest of my career. And if somebody gets pissed and tries to kill me, well, you better shoot good and you better be paying good for somebody to do it cuz I'm a slick motherfucker. Not only that, not only that, man, you it, don't fuck with somebody who don't care to die for what they're doing, especially if you don't like it, bro, because you better not like it a way, way more than I like it. That's all I got to say, bro. It's very rare to see somebody that's, that's, that, that's, that's that real about shit, though, because people, people don't like being real anymore. Well, people, because they're so scared of this or that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I uh, I just think it, it's a test to really who you are. Just like, look who's around you, man. Like, even with everything you're doing, we talk about uh, your team. Your team's Ben B. Mm, ben B. And your mom. Yeah. And, like, but that's, like, mm. it doesn't get any fucking realer than that. Like, mm-hmm. And let me tell you something else. <coughs> if you motherfuckers on the Internet get me canceled... And get me kicked off the internet. It's going to be the worst thing you've ever could have done. Let me tell you why. I'm going to be fucking three times as big. Yeah. The month you kick me off the internet. You know why? Because I'm going to go sell that fucking Lamborghini. Or whatever. And I'm going to go buy five huge fucking vans. Fill them with instruments. And hundreds of thousands of fucking CDs. And guess what? Every person I hang out with. Which is going to be tens of thousands. It's getting shared on fucking wherever it's at. Yeah. And I'm going to make another platform and they're <laughs> all going to instantly go there and they're all going to be back in 30 days. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. And guess what? None of their buddies are going to be getting a cut of any fucking thing because I'm going to be out there selling them by my fucking hand. Right. Right. Well, fuck, dude, we were talking about it. Like, I got such a good gauge on, like, meeting people and interacting with fans because, like, I got to watch them do it. Like, it's, you know, motherfuckers nowadays, they get done with the show, they're back on a bus or at a hotel room and gone. And it's like, uh, he taught me like, hey man, it means more like, just hang out. They all like you. Like, it's not like it's work at that point. Like, and you end up shooting pool for three hours. Mm -hmm. You end up sneaking out back with motherfuckers you don't know, but look like your family and smoking pot for two hours, you know, like, and talking. And Mm -hmm. I think that's why so many... People gravitate to you, Rod, and are gravitating to you now, Leroy, because they see themselves in y'all. Mm-hmm. Right? Because even though, even like for you, for example, the level that you're at, you don't ever appear any like you're better than anybody else, right. and you're just you. And people that's living where you live at can relate to that, just yeah. like they relate to you. 
which you learned, like you said, you know. You well, know, I'm, bro, I'm shittier than most. I'm trying to be like these people. Right. And, you know, and like you just said a minute ago, with, with going in and shooting pool for three hours, let me tell you something, bro. There's two kind of artists. There's two kind of artists. They One leaves that situation going, man, that's the fucking best memory they'll ever have. And then there's the other one like us that goes, man, I, I'm so glad I got the... Yeah, I, I got the experience. I'm gonna remember that for the rest of my life. Yeah, and bro, yeah. let me tell you, let me tell you something. This song ain't even come out yet. It was written fucking two years ago. It's called Somewhere in Panama. I tripped shrooms and rode my Harley all through Panama. I met a handicapped dude named Lizard, and I played pool with him. And I let him win. And he goes, "Motherfucker, you let me win. Don't let me win just because I'm in a fucking wheelchair." And I was like, "Oh shit!" And I shot pool with again and tried, and I lost. And I was like, man, lizard, I'm never gonna forget. I'm never gonna forget you, bro. Right. And that's the kind of stuff that when an artist remembers that, you know what they write in their song is the fucking truth, and you don't have to question it because no other artist in Nashville is gonna remember taking shrooms, riding a Harley, and meeting a cool ass motherfucker named Lizard, bro. Right. And that's just facts. Right. Well, and so for like me. It's damn sure at this stage that I'm in easier than where you are to do that. And the reason you do it so well, I think, is like... You don't have to. You, well, not... Like, yeah, you don't put yourself on a fucking pedestal. Like, Fuck that. That's so stupid. I, I hate that. I've never that ever. Right. Who like, the hell wants to fucking do that? That's weird. Like, I'm better than you. No, the fuck you're not. You're worse. Sweet. How can about? you be better than somebody or a group of people that built you? You can't. Exactly. Yeah, like, it just... Why would you want to be better than him? You know? Yeah. You, dude. No, 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 no. Well, it's no. like, I mean, fuck, like... I, I don't understand. It's one big I'm unnecessary really beat, fucking man. pissing contest, man. Huh? Like... What, right. And, and another thing with church, like, with church, what kills me is that people online all the time, because of you being a free thinker and being a person that just beats by your own drum people try to say that you're on something because of that oh no just, just because you may not be thinking in the box that most people think in mm -hmm. or you're not afraid to speak about something people just confuse that I would well he's he's on drugs mm -hmm. which I, I just don't that's hey, just what people and you know what the thing is about that Chad what if I was I mean I'm not but what right. if I was? Right. Who fucking cares? Right. It ain't hurting nobody. Right. I'm fucking 31. Yeah. I've been at court for five years, motherfucker. I should be doing every drug in the goddamn book. Yeah. Sure. So, so what, and this person, the people who say that, oh, you're on drugs. I can guarantee you that motherfucker's got a drug problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, who cares? Like, why are you, and that's the thing. People are mistaken being driven for being on drugs because they have to have something to blame it on because they're so fucking lazy. Or they're miserable with their, what they got. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and someone said the other day, they said, man, you've been up for three days. What's the deal? Passion, motherfucker. I'm on a mission. Right, yeah. And then they're like, and they're like, uh, well, uh, what did they say? They said, um, hang on, let me remember, remember. Uh, it might take me a few seconds. Hang on. Yeah. Oh, this lady said, uh, this lady said, you must be smoking meth. I said, well, motherfucker, I'm the most successful fucking meth head I've ever fucking met. <laughs> right. What are you? You're not a fucking meth head. You're talking shit to me. I'm fucking working. Right. Right. That's the mentality people have forgotten, bro. They think just because they say something about somebody, it truly means something. In real life, bro, you can look over in that corner. I got a stack of fucking guitars. I've been in here for three days drinking yoo hoos and fucking writing country music. While... There's tens of thousands of people right now somewhere talking shit that I don't even fucking know about. Right. Right. And, <laughs> bro, like, I mean, that's really it. Like, it's all, like, fucking inspiration. Like, dude, we sat in here and smoked pot and wrote a fucking country song faster than any of these fucking corporations can. Mm -hmm. Like, in it. Like, that's, it's, it's, to us, it's sad because we know... How easy it is to write a song if you just already go live the song. Right. But to them, they think they're doing something good. That's the crazy part. Right. And like, like, 
like Kid said in the uh, Holler Boy documentary, how you gonna call yourself an artist when you release two songs a year? I mean, and that's it? And you push the yeah. same two songs all that's year? That's a part-time job. And fuck, if, if that's a hobby, bro, <laughs> right. that you really don't like. Yeah. <laughs> right. Or you're not good at it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and it, it, I just don't understand, like, why would you be an artist if you're not fueled by fucking passion? Like, Chad knows this, and hell, you've always been like this, and at first it seems crazy, like, dude... I sit on 50 songs, like, and make more and not think about it. And then fucking Sonny or someone will reel us in, like, hey, man, just so you know, like, we got three albums right here. Let's... Real him in. Yeah. Oh, you said us. Well, yeah, no, no, real me and Oh, like, yeah, yeah. Fucking, uh... You know me, bro. I'm specific as fuck. <laughs> yeah, like, it's one of those things, but, like, I'm all... I'm always passionate. Like, mm-hmm. I'm, like, I'm inspired by fucking everything. Like, I am what I live, like... Well, and you love and you love music. You love yeah, music. Like, just like Ryan loves music. Mm-hmm. It's like I, I'm going to go on year twenty. I'm going to twenty twenty third be my twentieth year doing music. But like, and you'll just, never stop. No, for sure. Like I mean, like I, I get what y'all are saying, man. That's the way. But see, the thing about it is, it's hard for us to understand shit like that because we love what we do. A lot of the people that get into what we're doing are just getting into it for a check or. For and another reason or whatever. Them. Right. Yeah. yeah. And what it'll do for them and not what not what they make. Could it help somebody or could it do you know what I mean? They're looking at it as <clears throat> Exactly, bro. It's gotta do something for you as an artist here yeah. instead of here, dude. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. Like I, mean, I got I gotta go to the pisser. Right, if y'all if y'all if y'all end up ending it before I get back, I mean, see next time, baby. You can take them all the way. Yeah, man. Chad, I fall asleep. No, I'm good, bubba. That's yeah. a good movie. That's a sad movie, though. <coughs> it's like the part where they run from the cops. And now, like, how nice he is to her and builds that telescope. Dude, I got a <laughs> fucked up story. What? So, I watched yeah. Deliverance. For oh, the first man. Time. What'd you think? Dude, all right. So, like, I've always heard people reference it, and the only scene I've ever seen is the banjo picking kill. Yeah. I was tripping fucking shrooms, bro. Oh my god, that's not a good way to watch And that we're movie. fucking watching it, and my brother put it on, and I was like, have you seen it before? He's like, yeah. And I didn't ask if it was good or whatever, but if he's willing to watch it again, right? It took a turn for the fucking worst, dude. <laughs> I beat that little motherfucker's ass. I was like, dude, no, I, I don't oh, want to watch that. Oh, scene? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it gets pretty rough there, bro. Dude, oh my god. Well, at first I was pissed. I was like... I'm watching a movie about Burt Reynolds going on a fucking canoe trip. Like, Mm -hmm. the whole plot is them going down the river. And as soon as they got off the river... (laughs) You know, like... Down by the river. Dude, fuck. Like... Yeah. (laughs) You goofy, Leroy. Bro, like... Leroy's so goofy, dude. He's goofy for sure. I want to trip shrooms with you, Leroy. Oh, dude. It'll be like dude, going to fucking Magic Kingdom. That would be the like for sure. Bro, dude. we need to fucking trip shrooms in the middle of the dark in a metal TP in a fucking pouring down rain. I bet that would fuck with your head so bad. That's pretty cool sounding. I want to do that. I'd, I, I'd, dude, I'd come out of it like Steven Spielberg. I'd just be filming movies. Like. <laughs> That's the thing. That's what we're doing right now, bro. We're living the fucking movie out, bro. We all are. It's, it's the movie of the fucking outlaw scene of Nashville, bro. The outlaw music scene. That's what we are, dude. That's what we are. Yeah, for sure. That's, yeah. just, that's just right there. That's just the big batch of songs you got is here. Is there... Mm-hmm. Projects. That's dope. Is there anybody else, like, on your list that is on your bucket list to work with? Starlito. Starlito. Oh, I can't believe y'all haven't got one in I'm sure... Bro, we went to a boxing match and chopped it up a little bit, but... I ain't fucking, bro. He's one of my Nashville idols, bro. Oh, for sure. Exactly. He got it out the mud, dude. Yeah. That's the kind of shit you gotta put in your music for later on, bro. Yeah, but that shit was dope. Yeah, thank you, brother. Oh, boy. But the shit, dude, like, it's all the same album. You know what I mean? Like, it's fucking. That's what's crazy. Like, that, that, those country songs that you played at the beginning? Yeah. And then the Project Pat songs going on the same album? Oh, uh, they're all going out of singles, and I'm making one mega fucking album oh, okay. with those songs plus like ten new ones. Gotcha. That nobody knows about. 
for I love this thing. Bro, Chad. We yeah. had a video of you playing guitar for us the last time. Oh, no shit. Yeah, I'm breaking it. I be getting high as fuck and just want to play with it. <laughs> but, dude, I got to get you one of these, bro. Yeah. Look, I don't know chords or nothing. I just know low to high, high to low. That's all I need to know for to make music with stone. But, dude, this motherfucking thing can sound like so many different things. All right, so look. This is with nothing on. This is with something called Black Hole. This is called Big Ben. That's some desperado type shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, uh, and then say you're on, say you want to be on a beach, bro. Underneath a dock where it has weird acoustics that sound cool. Click summer beach, bro. Ain't that weird? I'm so high. I thought he. I thought he was gonna do a three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you next time, Chad. Love you, brother.